Wait a minute, I hear something. Dr. Boober! What's going on, everybody? Welcome back to another episode of Dr. Movie, where I'm driving my car and talking about movies, and you be listening. That's kind of how this works. Um, usually, I have plenty of words to describe a movie. Uh, this one, I'm still trying to figure out <laughs> how to talk about it. <clears throat> um, going back into my... Uh, Italian knockoff love. This is one. This is actually a first time watch for me. Um, and I don't know why it's taking so long because it does have John Saxon in it. I'm all about some John Saxon, y'all. And, and I don't know. You just can't go wrong with John, man. Uh, no matter what he's in, if he's the lead role, if he's a side character, it doesn't matter. It's John Saxon. But we are talking about the 1980 um, exploitation flick, splatter flick. It's called <laughs> Cannibal Apocalypse. Yeah. Uh, it's got several different names. Uh, it's also known as Cannibals in the Streets. I think it's got four or five different names. But, uh, Cannibal Apocalypse, I think, is what it's known for mostly in, in the U.S. anyways. Um, it's kind of a stretch <laughs> to call it Cannibal Apocalypse. I guess because of all the cannibal craze of the time, you had Cannibal Holocaust and all these other movies, so you had to find another word that you know to tie it in and make people think that you're you know, ripping off that movie. So yeah, we get... Uh, Cannibal Apocalypse and our synopsis is not what you think. <laughs> Let's see. I'm in a red light. I'm about to turn. Here we go. As soon as I get this turn, we'll read the synopsis. We've got uh, mentally unstable Vietnam vets who were held captive by the Viet Cong come back to America after being rescued carrying a dangerous virus that turns people into cannibals when bitten. So hey, what do you do if you want to make a zombie movie but you can't afford to dress everybody up like zombies? You just give them rabies, right? This is kind of a play on, in my mind, because I just know the history of this, but you know, I, I drink your blood, which I need to cover on this show, which I will eventually. Maybe soon. Who knows? But uh, the whole rabies thing, right? Giving people rabies and, I mean, this takes it to another extent. But this movie really takes a hard turn about halfway through it. And what a cast, right? I mean, the cast in this movie is pretty much a who's who of B Italian movie glory. <laughs> the lack of a better word. I mean, like I said, you got John Saxon. Who doesn't love John Saxon? Uh, from Enter the Dragon to Nightmare on M Street. I mean, the guy's all over the place. Tenebrae by Argento. You know, uh, your Corman flicks. I mean, the, the guy's everywhere, right? And always solid. But hey, boys and girls, we've got uh, Giovanni Lombardo Radis in this from... Uh, Gates of Hell or City of the Living Dead, whichever one you want to use on that. Uh, so yeah, we got some 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 faulty representation here, which he's been in another uh, cannibal flick too. What was it called? Cannibal Ferro, I believe, was what it was called, or Ferox, but I think it's Ferro. But uh, so again, piggybacking off of the popularity of those movies, we also have. Let me get to where I can see what I'm doing here. Uh, Valentino uh, Venatini, who was also in uh, Gates of Hell, or City of the Living Dead. So, seeing those guys kind of work together again, 
it's kind of cool, right? And again, I'm sure there's several other people that pop up in other stuff. I mean, again, the, the list is a mile long. The real problem with this movie is calling it Cannibal Apocalypse. And it really comes down to about 12 people that get rabies. So I don't know if you look up the definition of apocalypse. It says 12 people bitten and given rabies and become cannibals, right? <laughs> so, like I said, kind of a stretch. The name is uh, overreaching, I think, uh, what this movie really is. But anywho, let's talk about it. Uh, John Saxon, this is back in Vietnam. He's the leader of a, uh, of a brigade, I guess. His troops, and they're going into Viet Cong, and he's got two guys that are being held hostage, and he goes in on a rescue mission, and there's one uh, Viet Cong that comes out, you know, they're in a big shootout that gets caught on fire, and they run and they fall into this pit, and in the pit is where the guys are, the hostages, and they start eating her, and. Then John Saxon finds out that they're in that pit, opens it up, tries to get them out, and one of them jumps up and bites him on the arm. And uh, then it kind of flashes to modern day, 1980. John Saxon wakes up in his bed, kind of freaking out. So he's having this reoccurring nightmare of that whole situation and getting bit by one of his own guys. And, uh, you know, he's got the scar to prove it. But, again... They, they turned cannibalistic, I don't know because if they were starved to death or what, but now they got this craving for human flesh. They're both rescued, brought back, and they're living in the same town that John Saxon's living in, but they're in a, like an institute, right? They're being watched, being reprogrammed, right? And they set one of them loose, and they think that he's fully cured or whatever. And he's going out, and he's trying to make his way. He sees some girls that are jogging. And uh, these bikers start messing with these girls. And he kind of stops them in their tracks like, you know, yo, man, that's not cool, whatever. But, uh, you know, it was going to get to where the girls were probably going to get in some trouble. So he kind of saves the day there. And he walks into a theater because there's a war flick on. And he's sitting there, and he's really enjoying the flick. And then all of a sudden, this couple comes in. And they just start going at it right there in the in the seats in front of him. And he sees the girl lean back and, you know, the dude's doing his business or whatever. And uh, Giovanni, who's the, the, the character here, Charlie uh, Burkowski, I believe is his name. Uh, he reaches up and touches the girl's neck, the girl's neck while things are going on. And then he just decides he's going to take a big plug out of her. And he, so he just climbs up there and bites her right then he takes off running because she screams and then people are chasing after him and then the bikers are after him because they see him run out of the theater and everybody's yelling get that guy so now the bikers are chasing him and it leads to a little kind of strip mall flea market looking building that we kind of have a almost kind of a dawn of the dead situation where we're driving motorcycles through a store trying to uh capture this guy well he finds a gun and kills one of the bikers kills a security guard and all this is going on and and john saxon's wife hears on uh, she, she works at a news report right so she's she's a news anchor or whatever interviewer she hears that hey there's a standoff and it's a it's a ex you know vietnam vet not an ex vietnam vet but a vietnam vet that's kind of held, held up and he's she's thinking oh no my husband has done, you know, fell off the tilt. <laughs> and uh, so she contacts him, and he decides that he's going to go. He thinks, you know, he knows what's going on. So cops are surrounding the place. They're trying to get him to come out. He won't come out. And uh, so John Saxon kind of does a, uh, oh, what was the guy's name that was in Rambo that was his, his leader that goes in and talks Rambo down? Kind of the same deal here. Saxon goes in there, talks him down a bit, and then gets him to come out and turn himself in. So they put him back in the Institute, which is where the other guy that was captive at the time is in there as well. And they attack one of the one of the doctors in there, and she gets bit. And like the synopsis says, once you're bit, 
you start having these cravings and you've got a situation where <laughs> another weird situation where John Saxon is home by himself he's flying a you know gas powered airplane out in the backyard remote control plane and there's one of the little kids next door and a little boy comes over and he's teaching him how to fly it and then all of a sudden his, his teenage sister and when I mean when I say teenage I mean teenage don't even know if she's 17 just saying and uh, she's got the hots for John Saxon and she says hey can I borrow your wife's hair dryer I can't believe I'm going into all the details of this crazy movie <laughs> So John Saxon goes with her in the house to get the air dryer, but she kind of makes a move on him. And then, out of nowhere, uh, John Saxon, do you, you think uh, something's really going to happen? But what he does is he he bites her, but not in a, like, going to kill you kind of way, in kind of a almost pleasurable kind of way. I don't know. Uh, all I know is when he decides to go and try to help his buddy, she runs out to the car from next door and says, Hey, just want to say I had a really good time. I've never been bit like that before. I, I don't know what to tell you, folks. That's, that's just what happens. Anywho. Um, then this movie just takes a weird turn because... John Saxon, who's obviously was bit back in the day, he knows something's going on with him because he's getting these urges. You got the two guys in the hospital. You got the nurse they bit. You got a police officer that's been bit. And they either scratch people or bite people. And these people get contaminated. But here's the weird thing. It's like once you get bit and you're now a so-called rabies cannibal you group together you can tell that you're all afflicted <laughs> and you kind of group together so you get at one point you got John Saxon the two guys that he was in Vietnam with that he that he saved and then this nurse or the doctor the female doctor that got bit who by the way she kills a doctor by, I think she had a relationship with him. She walks up to him and kisses him, bites his tongue off, and then beats him to death with a rock. Why? No idea. Because I don't think she really eats him or does anything as to him. But here's the thing, is even though she did this, when they're out and about and they start getting in some fights with other people and stuff, she still screams and reacts like a woman that's helpless. And I'm like, well, wait a minute. <laughs> you bit a dude's tongue out and beat him to death with a rock. Why there's a rock in the doctor's office? No idea, but that's what happens. And, you know, why are you reacting like you're the, the helpless female here? Because obviously you're you're a killer. I don't know. But now you get these, these rabies-infected group that's running from the law that's being shot at and they go into the sewer of all places and get hunted down in there and John Saxon makes his way out and he makes his way back to his house and he's dressed up in his military outfit <clears throat> and you're not really sure what he's going to do but his wife shows up and uh, I don't know she uh She's been warned by another doctor that there's something wrong with your husband. Could be this weird, rare case of rabies. You get this explanation thing, right? Well, right when John Saxon acts like he's going to kill his wife, this doctor runs in and saves the day, only to find out that he got scratched earlier. So now he's one, and he bites John Saxon's wife. And then uh, because she knows that she's going to change too, again, Dawn of the Dead kind of idea, Hey, just go ahead and plug me, right? So her and John Saxon pretty much do each other in. Or John Saxon shoots her and then shoots himself. Not clear because you don't really see it. But the thing is, is earlier, 
his wife goes over to the neighbor's house to borrow their phone. I forgot to mention, there's this really angry granny, mom, aunt, whatever she is to these kids. And every time they're doing something, she's getting on to them. Well, when the wife goes over there, hey, where, where's, where's, what's her name? You know, can't find her anywhere. Well, that's because she's been, you know, chopped up and put in the fridge because the kids are, you know, cannibals too because, you know, Saxon bitter. That's pretty, <laughs> that's pretty much this movie. We get to see a group of people that's been bitten and got rabies that group together because you can just tell, you know, that uh, each other are the same and you go fight a group of bikers and you fight the police in a sewer and that's why you call this movie Cannibal Apocalypse because <laughs> does it ever really end? we don't know right? so for somebody that I felt like I didn't have any words. I, I think I did a pretty good job on trying to explain this one. Uh, yeah, man, it's a mishmash movie. Um, it's got some pretty decent gore in it. If you're, you know, if that's your thing, uh, for the time, it, it, it works pretty decent. There is one cool shot where a cop shoots a hole through uh, Charlie, and uh, it's just a big hole through him, almost kind of like Rambo Three, you know. But uh, uh, that's kind of it. Nothing to really write home about. It's just a cheap zombie knockoff movie trying to, I don't know, almost like the crazies in a bit, but more on this side of the tracks. So, I don't know. It was okay. Uh, not the best thing I've seen, but not the worst by a long shot, right? So, that's kind of my thoughts on this one. I'm going to give this, uh, I'll go ahead and give it a three out of five. I mean, I liked it. So, uh, take your chances on this one. See what you think. You may already know this one. Again, if you're a Saxon fan like I am, John Saxon. Well, the band, too. Saxon's pretty awesome. Uh, wheels of Steel. You know, they're a pretty good band. <laughs> she got wheels, wheels of steel. <laughs> Don't know why I started singing that, but anyways. Motorcycle man. Motorcycle man. Yeah. Saxon. Y'all need, need some Saxon in y'all life. <laughs> Anyways, folks, that's it for this one. Hey, let me know what you think about this movie if you got any requests. Hey, don't forget, uh, you can find this on all your formats that you listen to. I don't mention this hardly ever, but, you know, this is, if you're looking for this show, like on Spotify or something like that, you can't really just type in Dr. Movie and it show up because it, it is under the Hell Ming uh, moniker at Legion. So if you'll type in the Helming Power Hour, that's where you'll find all these episodes on your favorite pod listening device or app, whatever you want to listen to. Also on YouTube, every episode's on there. You go to my YouTube channel, which is Dr. Movie, if you look it up. And uh, everything's there. Uh, it's still pretty much the audio version. There are some videos for a few things if you haven't seen them, so you can go check those out. But uh, yeah, pretty much everywhere. Also on Instagram, Dr. Movie. There's Dr. Movie 1 and Dr. Movie 2. You can follow on either one of those. And, uh, you know, I'm just kind of out there. All right, folks. Uh, we will see you later on. Hope you enjoyed this episode. Have a nice whatever this is for you. Day, night, evening, holiday, whatever it is. <laughs> All right, folks. We will check you later. <laughs>